Hello guys, welcome back to Spooktober. Do you guys remember the two cases we did with the pretty face psycho and the bizarre behaviors of Lady Go? And in both of these cases, these dangerous ladies were diagnosed with a certain type of rare personality disorders. Now today's story is very similar to these cases, but in today's lady or the suspect was actually pregnant and she is very, very dangerous when this happened. She was also later diagnosed with something called histronic personality disorder, where individuals with this disorder seeks extreme attentions, talk dramatically with strong opinions, easily influenced, rapidly changing emotions, and they have a tendency to be a compulsive liar. This case is literally known to everyone in Korea, especially back in the 90s because this happened in 1997. Before we get started on that case, today's outfit to match the Spooktober. I am a bit gothic today, but not, not too gothic, you know? But I'm mixing a little bit of girly and gothic here, so do you guys like it? And I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Function of Beauty for especially sponsoring these mysterious videos. I talked about Function of Beauty before in my videos and you guys know how much I love these custom made shampoo and conditioners. And recently they just released custom body products. Function of Beauty offers 18 different hair goals. So for my particular hair type, I am a wavy, I am a medium, and also have oily scalp. If I don't wash my hair for two days, ugh. I want to nourish my roots, shine, soothe scalp, straighten, and volumize. So that was all the list that I have here. And the fragrance that I picked was the True Lavender, which is one of my favorite fragrances from Function of Beauty. It smells so natural and just like aroma oil. Function of Beauty has no nasty ingredients. There's no parabens, sulfates, GMLs, or toxins. It's 100% vegan and cruelty-free. Also, they use recycled plastic as well. I'm telling you guys, these custom-made ones are so different from the regular ones you get at the store. Also, you guys, it's getting chilly already and my hair has been really dry because I want to try this leave-in conditioner as well and my hair has been so silky and smooth and it's been growing up really long because it's been healthy I've been obsessed ever since you guys so remember to go and try your custom products by clicking the link down below you will get 20% off your first order and let me know how your hair is Thank you, Function of Beauty, for sponsoring today's video. All right, you guys, let's get into the story. And remember I told you guys that the story has been one of the most biggest cases in Korea, especially back in the late 90s. So this case happened in August 31st of 1997. It was a summer. It was a very hot day. There was a lady, and she was actually 28 years old back then, and her name was Chun Hyunju. Lady Chun was eight months pregnant at the time, and we're going to get into her personality, why she did the things that she did later on but let's just get into just what happened so she was actually near a shopping mall which had an academy in one of the floors she was just looking around looking at people and she found a little girl by the name Pak Chorong Chorong Pinari now this girl Nari stood out to Chun because she was very very beautiful Nari also was said to wear a lot of fancy you know nice clothes very elegant and Nari always just stood out from the crowd Nari was only eight years old and yes she does have a very unique name her name is literally one two three four five six seven eight syllables Pak Chorong Chorong Pinari because the family actually really wanted a girl and they weren't able to conceive a girl and they finally did and they were just so happy and she was so special to the family that the family just needed like a unique name and they just wanted to give the world to her so Nari was on her way to an English academy that was in this shopping mall now before she went in Miss Chun approached Nari and said hey girl wow you're wearing beautiful clothes you're so you're so pretty where are you going so miss chun then waited nadi until she finished her english academy class when she came out this is when miss chun approached her again and said hey you remember me right do you want to come with me i'll show you something really fun and for some reason nadi did end up following lady chun now we're going to be talking about the details about what really happened to nadi during these critical moments and the hours it's very sad but, but let's just talk about first about how this investigation was taking place when Nadia didn't return home late until like 6 p.m the family 
family got really worried and the mother started calling the academy and her academy friends. And a couple of Nadi's friends actually said they saw Nadi go with a young lady holding hands and going off somewhere. This is when the parents knew that this was not any of the family members or someone that she knew and they reported to the police right away. Now apparently in the 90s and early 2000s, there was a lot of these cases. So I guess this was a thing that used to happen when someone would be kidnapped, they would send threatening phone calls to the family asking probably for money or something like that. So the police right away took recording tapes and a tracking in Nadi's family house phone. And voila, just as they imagined, three hours later since Nadi went missing around 6 p.m., they got a phone call from a mysterious lady. <laughs> The mother picked up the phone and this lady said Nadi is well and just hung up. This phone call was so short that the police couldn't even get tracking. Now back in the days, apparently you had to at least talk to the other person for at least about 30 seconds or something like that in order to get the tracking of the other person. If it's too short, the police cannot find any addresses. This lady never indicated what she wanted, where to meet up, nothing. So the family was devastated and waited for 24 more hours. 24 hours later, another phone call came came in and was the same lady, she sounded a little bit weak, she sounded a little bit tired. <laughs> she basically said prepare $20,000. Nadi's mom pleaded and asked her if the daughter was alive and the lady insisted that she was and if you want to see her again, prepare the money. But she didn't tell her where to come again. Now the call was long enough in order for the police to track the lady and it was actually tracked to a payphone in Myeongdong area. Now the police acted really fast in this case and the police bolted to the payphone and unfortunately by then still of course the suspect was gone. Now the police asked the people that was around, hey have you seen this lady? They did describe her as someone being very young in her 20s and she was really short. Now another second phone call came to the mother and this time the lady was saying come to a specific location location in Myeongdong area. The lady was telling her to come to a cafe at the 8th floor. And by then, the lady was kind of getting suspicious and she was like, are you tracking me? Why are you talking to me on the phone for so long? So the police was actually able to track the phone and the address down. And this address came from a cafe in Myeongdong in the 8th floor where the suspect wanted to meet the victim's mother. Although the police got to the cafe really fast, they didn't see actually the suspect with the phone. So out of the 13 people that was in the cafe, they had to see who the suspect was. The suspect had to be in this cafe somewhere because the police went there within a couple minutes. Now they say that there was 13 people in this cafe and 12 of them were females. So at least one of them has to be the suspect. The police started asking all the people that was there for their identification and their fingerprints. Now obviously at that moment, the police didn't know who the suspect was. Now when they asked this pregnant lady for her identification and her fingerprints, she started going ballistic. She was acting really angry she was yelling saying what are you doing what are you doing with a pregnant woman she all of a sudden said like my stomach hurts I think the baby's about to come out I need to go to the hospital let me go and basically this lady was kind of smart to use her vulnerability of being pregnant to trick the officers into thinking that she was vulnerable and that she had nothing to do with a criminal activity and the police actually felt for this and thought that there's no way the suspect could be pregnant so all they did was check her identification and they let her go now, unfortunately, because they didn't have a warrant to search for people, they did have to let all of the 13 people go and they couldn't do anything about it that day. After this day, there was no phone call that was ever made to Nadi's family ever again. Not demanding any money, not demanding anything. She basically knew that the police was after her. The story was made public about five days after Nadi went missing. Everyone in Korea was giving tips and nothing really led anywhere. Now, two weeks went by since Nadi went missing and there was this one tip that was made to the police and was from a middle-aged man who was claiming that his daughter who was pregnant went missing September 1st and he cannot find her and he felt that police was coming by his house and surveilling his home and he just thought did my daughter have something to do with this so when this man came in for questioning the police let him hear this suspect's voice and when this middle-aged man and his wife was hearing back the tapes they soon found out that this voice indeed matched their daughter's daughter's 
boys. Now, number one place runaways are probably at are motels. And they started looking around all these motels and they finally found her. On September 22nd, police finally caught Miss Chun was staying at a motel in the Shinim area of Korea. When she was found, they said she was almost soulless. Like she was almost like a zombie. They said that she hasn't washed up in a couple of days. It seemed like, like her hair was so messy and dirty. Like she just was out of it. Also said she was just not taking care of her body at all. I mean, she was pregnant and she was just in a hot mess. You could see in these videos when she was caught, she was just lifeless. I mean, I don't know if she's acting. I feel like she's probably acting most of this, but when the police was investigating her, she was actually not talking at all. She said no word for two hours. The police had to do some hours of convincing and convincing and she finally said she will take them to the area where Nadi was. Police actually didn't even know if Nadi was alive at this point. Now, Miss Chun took the police to the town of Sadang in Korea, and it was a basement of her husband failed puppet show business. Now, they said that this basement was so dirty. It was full of mold. It was just like full of garbage, dirt, bugs. And there was like spider webs everywhere. It was just filthy. And police could not even believe that anyone could even stay here for a couple hours because it was that dirty. Finally, Miss Chun pointed to a backpack in the corner of the basement saying that is where Nadi is. Now, unfortunately, Nadi was found stuffed inside this backpack and there was evidence that she was strangled and she died pretty much the day she was kidnapped. So basically, the suspect, Chun, was threatening the family even though she knew that Nadi has passed away and she killed her. Now, let's get into what really happened to Nadi during these critical moments. And remember, Miss Chun took Nadi after her English class and she took her to her husband's puppet show basement. That is when Miss Chun called Nadi's family to confirm that this was a legit phone number so that later she could ask for money. That might not 100% make sense why Ms. Chun had to end the child's life, but the most plausible explanation is that Nadi probably at the moment knew that something was really wrong and she had to get out of there. She was probably yelling, crying, screaming, saying that she wanted to go home, and Ms. Chun just felt like she could not take care of this little child. Now, investigators say that during child kidnapping, the most critical time frame is 7 hours to 72 hours because it's not easy and it's actually difficult to deal with 8 year old child. They will start to yell, they will start to kick, they will start to just become really heavy responsibility for the suspects. So this is when Miss Chun decided to give some sleeping pills to Nadi because she was just making a fuss and she was getting scared that someone would hear her voice. So when finally Nadi was asleep, this is when Chun decided to end Nadi's life. Now after Miss Chun took the police to where Nadi was, Miss Chun was basically lying and telling the police that there was more suspects than she was actually the innocent person. She was saying that she was led to do this by three other people, two men and one female. Police say during the investigation, Chun was just being really dramatic, but she never provided any evidence of this and police soon found out that she was again lying. Now when she was doing the public reenactments, which is a thing in Korea where suspects have to reenact what they did in live and it's just kind of like more evidence for the court. All she did was cry and act as the innocent person as you could see she's all of a sudden acting very weak she's all of a sudden acting like she's crying and she's innocent i mean this is one of the characteristics of histrionic personality disorders where they will always act as the innocent victims now at the end she was put into life imprisonment for what she's done but the question is why does she do this who is miss chun what what was going through her head and her life story is actually really ironic because miss chun was a lady who grew up with with a relatively just fine family. They said that she didn't really have like hardships growing up in life. Her parents worked a very normal job. There was really nothing in her childhood that indicated that there was anything wrong in the family. Now, one of her characteristics was that she did like expensive things. They say that she also tended to lie often and she was a compulsive liar throughout pretty much all her life. People around her still say that she did lie about who she was, who her parents were, how much money she had to her husband and her friends. So they technically never knew who she really was. She tried to go to college after high school but they said that she failed in her major and she just dropped out of school. But she decided to re-enroll to school for writing at the age of 26. She said that she really loved writing and that she wanted to have this dream as a reporter. Now her life kind of went downhill after marriage. Now while she was re-enrolled at school, this is when she met her husband and he was a stage actor major. Now she actually got pregnant before she got married and her parents 
parents was really against marrying this guy because he was a stage actor major and they knew that like entertainment careers especially acting was not gonna make any income for the family he also had a puppet show business that failed he was also an actor that failed and Miss Chun and the husband just had absolutely no money to survive they also had $30,000 in debt and they really struggled with money and this is when Miss Chun just like decided to basically take the revenge on other people for her life. Now at that moment when Miss Chun felt like her life was just falling all apart, this is when she saw the little girl that was dressed very fancy, very nice, very beautiful and I think she just felt this envious feeling for this child. Felt like she just had to get back like her revenge of her life on this innocent child. Which of course doesn't explain why Chun had to kill Nari because you know it was before she even made the phone call to the family. Now because of all these signs, professionals declared Chun of having a pers histronic personality disorder. Now this particular histronic personality disorder is really unique because, because individuals with this disorder must feel like they're center of the movie. They must make up lies. They must make themselves look good in front of others. That's why she lied to her boyfriend or husband and her friends that she was from a rich family, that she was studying this major, that she had high grades when she didn't. She make herself look like the main character in order to receive attention from people. And when her life was falling down and she wasn't receiving the attention that she felt like she deserved, she needed to take that anger out on someone else. The really interesting thing is in Korean HPD, you say it as Yeongguk Song In Kyok Tange. Yeongguk actually means acting, like stage acting. So in Korean, it directly translates to acting personality disorder. And at the end, sickly, she used her vulnerability of being pregnant, of being a female, and being young, all of this to her advantage. I would love to know what you guys have thought about this story. Um, it's very scary and dangerous out there, you guys. And thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. See you guys in my next video.